what is going on, everybody? It is Master of the TDS, and I am joined by my lovely wife... Writing Raven. And we're back for another episode of Psycho Synopsis. Indeed. The segment where we summarize all the Psycho for you. Just a scattering of topics throughout the week, all summarized into a neat little package for you to enjoy and consume at your leisure. You're welcome. We are shooting for a very lofty goal with our subscribers right now. We are aiming for 4K by the end of the year. So do help us get there. It's an improbable goal, but you never know. Shoot for the stars and so on. So if you have not subscribed, please do so. If you have any friends or anybody you think would like the channel, please send them our way. We do accept referrals. Yes, and do consider joining our channel at the dusk, dawn, or midnight level. We just got new emotes that are Bad Kitty related, so you can check those out. There'll be a post about it on the community tab. Even if you're not a member, you should be able to see it. Yes, and they are adorable. Anyways, without further ado, let us bring in our first client. And we have, as usual, Ezra Miller. I want to apologize to everyone that I have alarmed and upset with my past behavior. I'm committed to doing the necessary work to get back to a healthy, safe, and productive stage in my life. Ezra Miller. Translation. We spent too much money on this movie to scrap it. Please forgive criminal behavior so we can put the movie out. Warner Brothers. After six months of doing their best reverse Flash impression, the Flash star Ezra Miller has finally addressed their storm of recent controversies, attributing them to complex mental health issues and claiming to have begun ongoing treatment in order to get life back on track. Uh, what do you even say about that? He's only figuring it out now! Press X to doubt. Majorly. We get it, Warner Brothers. You want to put the Flash movie out. You put a lot of money into it. However, people are not going to show up because of this guy's behavior. And just because he has different pronouns or identifies differently does not magically allow him to apologize and then not have to pay any consequences for his criminal behavior. Very criminal. Emphasis on criminal. The guy is a criminal. Fire him already. It's like... He's going to apologize, and you're just going to forgive him, and then we can put the movie out. No. no! Jinx. It's not worth it. You are literally platforming someone who has literally committed crimes. I'm glad to hear that he wants to get into treatment. I doubt he will. Mm-hmm. But at least that's in the right direction, and I doubt this even came from him. It was probably from someone who spoke on behalf of him. It was someone who spoke on behalf of him. It wasn't actually Ezra who said it. How do we know he actually means what has been said, if he actually said it at all? We don't. Uh, we just have to take their word for it, and they think that just doing this will get him out of any kind of wrongdoing. No. No. Look, they've mentioned that he's no longer going to be working with them after this. But still, at this point... Here's what you do. If you feel the movie's too good, dump it on HBO Max. It will get whatever money it's going to get. And then just move on. Mm -hmm. I think you shouldn't release the film at all. Same. But if it's too much effort, you did can Batgirl and a bunch of other stuff. So, fine. Throw it on HBO Max and move on. But stop platforming an abuser. Stop platforming a criminal. Mm-hmm. What he said. Moving on. Next up, we have one of our favorites, Tom Taylor. Another gimmick? Zazlav doesn't think we're profitable. This is how you're going to fix that? Trust me, this will sell comics. Later. My comic sales! It appears that the entire strategy behind Superman Son of Kal El is to attempt to generate partisan political outrage for media attention. In the just-released issue number 14, the creative team doubles down by having Superman and his male companion flirt with the idea of gay marriage. Why? Hey, it's my good buddy Tom. How you doing? You still have me blocked on Twitter because you're a coward. <sighs> um, again? Really? Seriously, Why? Turns out it's not an actual ring, it's a flight ring, but... A Legion of Superheroes flight ring, which is specifically for the Legion of Superheroes in the 31st century. It is one of the signature marks of being a Legion member that allows all members of the Legion to fly, whether or not they have the ability to. Created by Brainiac 5, an absolute genius. What is it doing in the 21st century? Better question, why are you giving it to 
a self-entitled hacktivist. Who isn't even in the Legion! This is just ridiculous at this point, and uh, I've had to see images of John Kent with his pride cape. Ew. And it just looks ridiculous. You might as well just call him Flying Target. No doubt! This isn't going to work. No. You guys keep going for this, and what's going to happen is you're going to keep having a bump in sales when you do something stupid, and then it will go right back down. It's not going to stay the way it was. It's not going to stay up. This is not enough to keep your comics profitable and continue going forward. It's not. Even with that, the whole... I mean, I do know some about the Legion of Superheroes. Brainy created a a failsafe to keep the rings from getting stolen. How... He wouldn't allow it to just be given to someone who's not a member. Who knows at this point? Maybe they made him a member. Maybe they did something. At this point, we don't even know. They don't care about the characters. They care about what messages they can convey. And it's not working. You have people blocked who don't agree with you. And then you go on rants about how your comic is still profitable. And then we're supposed to believe you because it's on the Amazon bestseller list for a certain category they made just for you. That doesn't mean you're selling well. It just means you're entitled and a coward and what other word can I use? It's funny because your last time you tried to make a post about that, your thing had four reviews. Wah, wah. Four reviews. Mm-hmm. But yes, it's doing fine. Continue going down this road and your comics will not become profitable. Maybe one day you'll wake up, but I doubt it. Uh, Until then, keep making stupid decisions and we'll keep talking about you. One day maybe you will unblock me. That'll be fun. Mm -hmm. But uh, until then, um, your comic sales aren't going to go higher. Cry more? Definitely cry more. Moving on. Next in our waiting room, we have She-Hulk. Anything you can do, I can do better! Yes, you can do anything better than me because woman. (laughs) As if it were not already evidently clear from the series marketing that Marvel's latest Disney Plus offering would seek to supplant the Hulk with his cousin by means of tearing him down, the premiere episode of She-Hulk Attorney at Law has revealed that after months of searching for a way to recover from his universe-restoring snap in Avengers Endgame, the better reception of his cousin's body to their shared powers was the key to his healing. Which makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Also, uh, again, she doesn't get a blood transfusion. She gets a couple drops of his blood on her open wound, and that's what makes her She-Hulk. Which, fine. We could let's let's put that aside for a sec. Fine. Let's say that changes her. Hmm. Okay, so she has regular blood with like three drops of your blood in it, and that's somehow better than your blood. The least they could do was make it an explanation of their shared biological DNA. They did. They mentioned that specifically that they both have, like, a a special gene for, like, allowing them to absorb gamma, whatever. It was stupid. They should have just given her a blood transfusion. Yeah. Now, they mentioned the reason they didn't go with that route was because they didn't want to do, like, a mob hit or whatever. You could have literally done the car accident but made it that she was hurt and he had to do something quickly. And then he had to, you know, do a blood transfusion right away. Mm Mm-hmm. Simple. It would have made more sense than this! Uh, the whole show, I've seen clips from the first episode, and I want to make very clear, my wife and I have not watched it, and we have no plans to. From what we've heard of the reviews, and the clips, it is bad. Like, I get it. Some people just like Marvel content, and that's cool. You do your thing. As long as you're not trying to shove it down our throats that we have to like it too, and you can respect where we're coming from, that's cool. But we don't like how badly it's written. For one thing, the writers came out and said that they were originally going to make it mostly about Abomination's trial, but they didn't do that because they didn't know how to write court scenes. That's not something you admit as a writer. If you don't know how to do it, either hire someone who can or hire a consultant to help you. Especially when the show's called She-Hulk Attorney at Law, admitting that you can't write law scenes for a law-based show that's in the title. That is the definition of stupidity. 
And then they made her also go on a rant about how she's more powerful than Hulk, better than him at everything, but also that she can control her anger better than he can because she got catcalled in the street and she has to explain to men her area of expertise over and over because otherwise she gets talked down to. Um, Bruce's mom was murdered. He watched his dad beat his mother to death and lost the love of his life, went on rampages over and over, was hunted down by the government, and you think that just having to struggle being a first world woman makes you better than him at controlling your anger? And also, he even admits during Avengers that at one point he was very low and he tried to off himself. Quote, I got low, I didn't see an end, so I put a bullet in my mouth and the other guy spit it out. End quote. Yeah, but catcalling bad. Because whammon. And again, some of the stunt work and stuff like that was really bad to look at. And, you know, uh, we'll wait and see. Again, if you like it, you're totally fine to like it. But you gotta admit that it's very cheaply done. And... Again, you do you, mm -hmm. but it just seems terrible. They didn't nail the character of She-Hulk at all. They've made her a complete opposite of what she actually was in the comics, which is a shame. And yeah, another Disney Marvel product has been churned off the assembly line for you to consume. Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. Or else you're a bigot. Mm. Moving on. Next up, we have the Spider-Man Remastered game. Time to engage the virtue signal or get banned, bigot! Ahmad removing LGBT pride flags from Marvel Spider-Man on PC has been banned from Nexus mods in less than 24 hours. I really don't see the problem with changing flags to what you want in a game. Yeah. So, I ended up getting attacked about this online because here is the thing, I want to make this very clear. I have no problem with you doing whatever you want to do. In video games, like, for example, when I was younger, I used to play a lot of GTA, I believe it was San Andreas? I don't know for sure. But, there were a bunch of mods out there. At one point I made my character into Ghost Rider, at one point I made, you know, a bunch of things change, I added, like, a bunch of cool things. It was cool. And one of the things you could do is you could change aesthetics within the game, like billboards and stuff like that. It was always a thing. All this person did for this game was change a setting that was already in the game for countries that don't allow this kind of stuff and made it so that it was swapped. That's all they did. But apparently, Nexus Mods decided that in a single-player game where nobody else but you is going to see this, that doing that is bad. Why? Just because you change something within a game doesn't mean you're phobic. Now, people were saying, oh, but if you're changing only that, whatever. What if I want to be Captain Jack Sparrow, and I want to be a pirate, and I want to make all the flags pirate flags? Because why not? I don't see a problem with that. I'm phobic now. Well, if you don't like my pirate flags, then that means you're pirate phobe, huh? Is that how it works? I don't know. It's just ridiculous at this point. Just because you identify under this umbrella doesn't mean that everybody else has to like it, accept it, or engage with it. Now, are they allowed to harass you and bother you about it? No, that's not fair for anybody. No. But if they want to choose in their own single player game to change something, which again was already within the game, they just swapped the line of code that was already in the game for countries that don't allow this, Game customization exists for a lot of single of single player games. If this was a multiplayer game that they hacked, changed it, okay, fair. Then you could say something that's a bit mean. Mm -hmm. But it's never going to bother you. These people online look for things to be offended by, and this Nexus mods just removing it and banning the people over it is ridiculous. Don't like it? Remove the mod, maybe. Fine. I think that's already pushing it, but whatever. You remove the mod and you ban the people over something that they chose to do within their single-player game. That's going way too far. Nobody who doesn't want to has to download the mod. It's optional. That's why it's called a mod. But, of course, if you don't like it being rammed down your throat in video games, then and if you change it, you're a bigot for some reason that I don't understand. That's not how it works. Try again. Yeah. Shall we move on? Next up, we have 
and or. How should I make this about my gender today? Denise Gao, who plays supervisor Deidre Miro in the upcoming Andor series on Disney+, Plus, recently detailed that her character's arc explores gender politics. And no wonder, she looks like Ellen DeGeneres. Actually, she does, which I thought was kind of funny. <laughs> Uh, but also, this is not the, this is like the second statement they've come out with. With the first one was that it's going to explore a Trumpian world. Are we serious? Really? Why? He's not in the office anymore. Whether you liked him or not does not matter. This is a TV show in a galaxy far, far away. Emphasis on far, far away. Seriously. I think it's far, far away from your level of intelligence, and that's why it's a problem. What intelligence? That's what I'm saying. Mm. It's so far away that they'd never be able to reach it even if they were intelligent. Oh, fair point. Uh, stop it. This is ridiculous. At this point, as I've mentioned multiple times, Star Wars is dead to me. Mm. Haven't watched much. I did watch The Mandalorian first season for Gina, and then after that when they fired her, haven't watched anything Star Wars related since. Yeah, as we have mentioned before. And not going to watch this. But... This is how you kill your marketing. No kidding! You don't need to say this. Whether you like the show or not, or the show ends up being good, put it aside for a second. Look at this in the neutral lens. You are alienating potential fans of a show when you didn't have to. You could have just not said anything and just done it. If you were really after normalization of all this kind of stuff that you seem to be like preaching... You wouldn't need to talk about it so much. Exactly. Making a huge deal about it, making it a marketing point, is specifically to alienate certain people. That way, when the show flops, you can then blame all those people. Yeah. Rinse, repeat. Not interested. If I did have any interest and I were someone who was actually watching Star Wars and I saw all this come out, even if I wasn't on whatever side or whatever... I would just be not interested anymore. I would be extremely confused. You're making it super political before the show even comes out. Yes, Star Wars has political elements. It always has. But this is ridiculous. There's no reason to bring this in. Seriously, none. You guys are just killing Star Wars more than it's already dead. As I've said before, at this point, it's just necrophilia. Yeah, and this is just ridiculous. Uh, hopefully Captain Ellen DeGeneres uh, will be less of a degenerate. I don't know. Well, she is a degenerate for sure. Whatever. Eh, I don't care. Yeah, apathetic to Star Wars. Done at this point. Just do whatever you want. This is a stupid marketing tactic. Stop it. Moving on. And next up in our waiting room, we have Galadriel's new actress. So this is from Morphid Clark. Anyone sending hate to my black castmates, get off my page and get off the internet and shut up. And then you could see she included the gif where it says shut the f up morphid clark who plays galadriel in the upcoming the lord of the rings the rings of power series admitted the show as a perversion of J.R.R. tolkien's work she then followed that up by telling critics to shut the f up sigh they realized that their spin isn't working mm. they tried like recently to be like oh well you know, we, we did we did care about the Lord and all this stuff, and they realized nobody cared. So they're like, okay, time to pull out the let's attack the fans and call them all bigots and racists and sexists. Card. Which, uh, yeah. It just makes everyone want to roast it more. Again, if you're confident that this is good and that we're going to be wrong, then don't say anything. Just wait for the product to come out and let people see for themselves. Prove you're right by saying nothing and just showing. Show, not tell. That's how TV works. But these people don't care. They know what they've made is terrible. They know the fan backlash. And so what they're trying to do is to pull a page from the Star Wars book and preemptively call people names and whatever. And that way, when the show flops, they can blame everybody for being sexist, racist, whatever they want to say, instead of actually putting the responsibility for their own failure on their own two shoulders where it belonged all along. I guess they didn't learn from Star Wars failure, huh? Yeah. How, how's Reva's lightsaber doing? Oh, wait, it didn't get funded. No, not at all. Cobra Hiss, on the other hand. Yeah, pretty much. 
this is ridiculous. We all know that you were going to go do this. We all saw this coming. This show is going to be a train wreck. And the reason I can say that comfortably is because A, I know a little bit about what's going on in the show from sources and what I've heard. And also, if you were really confident in your work and you were really confident in what you were going to show us, then there would be no reason to lash out at the fans. You'd let your work speak for you. And you can't do that, which tells us that maybe you're not as confident in your work as you'd like us to think. Yeah, what he said. Personally, I do let my writing speak for itself. Yeah, because you're a normal person. These people, all they care about is what messages they can push, and that's all. I mean, I'd hardly call myself normal, but I am definitely more sane and competent than these people. You know what I meant. These people are so far gone and so far lost in their own ideology that they will never find their way out. I also have talent, which they don't have. That's true. <laughs> But yeah, uh, keep attacking fans, we'll keep making content on you, and then we'll make content on the show when it comes out, and we'll laugh at you even more. And monetize it! Yep. Thanks! Bye now! Moving on! And for our final client of the day, we have the one that I have been waiting this whole time for, Wednesday Adams. You can't choose your family. The movies, the comic strip. The new teaser for Tim Burton's Netflix series also offers a first glimpse of Catherine Zeta-Jones and Louise Guzman as Morticia and Gomez Adams. This whole trailer really has me still quite apprehensive. It has its moments, but I still just don't know. What they're really going for with the casting for Gomez and Morticia is more akin to the original comic strip and the original cartoon that the comic strip that was based off the comic strip which had Gomez looking a little more like you see on the picture of the right, which they did in the animated movie that does not exist. But the one that people are more familiar with is either the 60s sitcom John Astin or the 90s movies Raul Yulia, both of which were great castings, but that is what really popularized the Addams Family. I learned from the Addams Family originally from the cartoons when they had crossovers with Batman and Scooby-Doo. Which, yes, were a thing. You could find them somewhere, I don't remember where, but they do exist. That was my introduction. And then I found the 60s sitcom, which I love. And then I discovered they were movies, which I love. I really, 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 really want this show to be good, but Tim Burton only directed half of it from what we have learned. Which makes me wonder, who directed the other half? I don't know. One thing that bothered me, again, my wife, as you can tell, is more of an Adams Family fan than I am. Mm -hmm. I am would consider myself a fan as well, uh, but definitely have consumed a lot less Adams-related content, so I don't have as strong of an opinion to base mine off of. But one thing that bothered me was that in all the shows and things that I've seen, yes, Wednesday has tendencies and tries to off people, but you never actually see that in the films, movies, or comic strips. They don't show it. That is true. It's usually just her playing a game. Anytime she tortures her brother, he always survives. And in this, they show her dropping two things of piranhas in the pool over someone bullying her brother, and there's blood, and they they make us believe that, they, that she's just castrating people, but once there's blood in the water, they're dead. Piranhas don't stop at just the junk. Piranhas will eat and eat and eat until there are only bones left, which whoever wrote that scene should have researched. And again, Wednesday would not do that. I can imagine her holding them up and being like, your move, and then dropping them, and then it cuts to a different screen and we don't see it. Yes, we can have the implication which allows for the suspension of disbelief, which allows us to assume what happened. The implication is just that she, you know, had the piranhas castrate the guy. But... Even if they didn't eat him completely, he would have bled out in the pool. And also, it's just like she's not going to prison, not whatever. And again, maybe they do do this justice. We don't know. I don't know yet. They're going for a darker take. This is not Wednesday Adams. It's just kind of silly. I personally am not looking forward to this. I know my wife is not either. But I do want to review it because I do at least want to give it a chance. Yeah, we're willing to give it a chance. And if it is good and it turns out to be good, we will say so. We will. Because I think people are expecting us to do a review of this by now. And we'll get to it. But right now, what we're seeing doesn't exactly have us, in, you know, super hopeful. Yeah, I'm so apprehensive. I really just want it to be good. 
Hopefully it will be. Yes. But we'll have to wait and see. You know, it doesn't matter what the source material is. The important part of it is whether they do the characters justice. And whether it is written well. And we'll wait and see if that is the case. We will. Moving on. And with that being our final client of the day, it is time for us to reveal the diagnosis of the week. And we have an interesting diagnosis for you today. Do tell. The diagnosis for this week is persecutory delusions. Please explain. Persecutory delusions are persistent, troubling, false beliefs that one is about to be harmed or mistreated by others in some way without evidence. Uh, They believe harm's gonna occur, they believe someone has an intention to harm, and it's basically the idea that these people believe that they are going to be harmed by people, so they need to lash out ahead of time. For example, Ezra Miller is a good example of this. Uh, The things that they're doing with Ring of Power is also, and with the Spider-Man stuff, all of that shows these people are like looking for harm. They're believing that they're going to be harmed, when in reality, none of this is going to harm them if they just ignored it. And so they continue to expunge these beliefs that they are going to be targeted or going to be hurt by this stuff. And that's why these places need to make changes or whatever is because people need to be seen on screen or they'll be injured or hurt or whatever. And it's ridiculous. None of that makes any sense. It's not how that works. And these people are so delusional and so caught up in it that they are looking for villains everywhere. And that's one of the reasons that we are in the place that we are with fandoms divided and at each other's throats. And so that's why I feel like this is a very good diagnosis for this week. I agree. Now we move on to the remedy of the week. And this week we'll be sending you to the Uber Geek, a member of the Legion of Memers who makes some pretty good content as well. And as you can see, he's at, currently, as we're recording this, at 1.28K. Uh, he's a good guy. He's always been nice to us. He makes some great memes. Uh, he has some great Lord of the Rings content that you should check out. Mm-hmm. And he does some other great videos as well. And you know, we like to help out the community. So head on over there, bring your memes. And let him know that Gothic Therapy referred you. Indeed. That's all we have for this week. Let us know what you think in the comments below and also make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe with notifications on so you do not miss your weekly therapy session. Or you will be charged. But remember, if you do subscribe, your first session is free. So smash those buttons like they're bad kitties. And also do consider joining the channel at the dusk, midnight, or dawn levels. We would appreciate it. Plus, you can find all of our socials in the description below as well as links to our merch store and our Discord server known as The Clinic. Please do check those out. But that's all we have, and we will see you guys in the next one. Gothic Therapy, out.